Our next topic is the elastic modulus. So before we get into a bunch of demos and problems and specifics, I wanted to give you a couple of general things about what this means. So one is if you think back, we started with point masses and we did forces on point masses, kinematics. And then we said, well, actually, let's think about extended objects. And then suddenly their direction mattered. And we did rotations and torques and angular momentum. So now we're taking it one step further. We have extended objects, but the elastic modulus is about how force deforms an extended object. So it's not really about the kinematics or the motion of the object, it's about the deformation of the object. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there are many elastic moduluses or moduli, um, but I want to show you how they're all really the same. So there are lots of definitions, I'm going to show you three of them, but in general, the elastic modulus and elastic modulus um, equals some stress. That's the force applied. That's some version of the force. Right? Uh, some version of the force over the strain. And that is uh, sort of the mechanical, the deformation is the strain right there. So now we're going to look at uh, several versions of elastic modulus. I'm sorry. I never could spell under stress. Um, OK, so we're going to look first at the one that has to do with extending an object. And that's usually referred to as the Young's modulus. And you have to be careful with these. Often they'll just throw words around. Just say, oh, elastic modulus. And sometimes they'll call it Young. Sometimes they won't. So I was trying to tell you there's the general way to think of it. And now here's the specifics. Okay, so Young's modulus is usually when you're extending the length. Okay, so say I have a rod of some material that looks like this, and it's got a length L, and it's got a cross-sectional area A. If I apply a force to it, like that, if I pull on it, if, it's, we're, if, we're, doing, if we're not thinking about deformations, we say, well, you can't really you pull on it, nothing's going to happen. But in reality, a real material, if you pull on it, it'll stretch, right? So it's really then we pull, and it gets a little longer, like that. We'll call that delta L. So we pulled on it, we made it longer. So this is just the equation that describes that. There's this thing called the Young's modulus Y, and it is the stress over the strain. The stress is the force per unit area. So it's got the unit of a pressure. It's kind of like a pressure, force per unit area. And the strain is a unitless description of how deformed it is. So the clear way to make it unitless here is to take your delta L and divide it by L. It's like the fractional extension or the percent it extended or whatever you want to call it. So delta L over L, like that. So in the end, the unit of the modulus is a pressure, is Newton per meter squared. But it's really, it's more than, it's not really a pressure. It's a description of how that pressure extends the object in a sort of fractional sense which is why meters don't show up in that sense. So we'll use some of these, and you'll see sort of how this works. But that's for length. But you can also look at uh, shear, right? So the shear modulus. Like this. And this would be for lateral deformations. So say you have that same rod like that, same area A, same length L, like that. What if you apply the force this way? Right, so you apply the force like this to the edge. What's it going to do? Well, actually, it's going to do sort of two things. And we only care about one of them, OK? So for now, since we're defining shear modulus, let's say it'll do this. It'll become sheared. Right, so this area will be the same, but it will deform in a way kind of like that, like all the, I'm sorry, it goes straight down. All the slices of the thing will just go down in a shear deformation, right? And then the delta L we care about is uh, like from where that height of that top edge was, delta X. How far down did you shear it? That modulus, we'll call it, I think, S usually. And it's the same pressure that you would apply. 
Same force per unit area, it's just in a different direction. So now you can see it's not really a pressure, right? Force per unit area. So the same force over the cross-sectional area. And then, again, it's a fractional deformation. It's delta x over L. Also a unit of pressure, but you can see it is not a pressure. It is a modulus. It describes how much something deforms. What's a little weird about this one is if you apply a force that way, it'll also bend. It'll also make a little bit of an arc. It'll partly shear. It'll partly uh, bend. And the bend where it makes like a curved arc is actually this happening. If something extends more on the top and it contracts on the bottom, it makes an arc. So how much it does that and how much it shears depends on the relative values of y and s. Most materials tend to make an arc, but there is a concept of a shear uh, that can happen and can be measured. The third one I wanted to show you, just to get this general picture going, is the bulk modulus. And it is for volume. Right. So let's say, so say you have a nice cube of material here, and you apply a huge pressure to it. And by that, I mean you apply a force. Now I really do mean a pressure. Right? You apply a force to all sides, one in the back, one in the front. Right? So apply pressure. Uh, F per unit area, right there. We put it deep underwater. Uh, then the bulk modulus will be this, uh, pressure P equals that, so B is whatever pressure you applied. And then what you get is you're gonna compress this object to some smaller size. Here's a little cube inside. Oh, we compressed it like that. We got small it got, and it's just delta V over V. Since it's bulk modulus, um, the strain part is how you deform the volume. All right, so that's different from these two. Has a unit of pressure. In this case, it really is kind of like a pressure. It's like when you apply a pressure, how much of a uh, fractional volume change do you get? So we start out with no problems, just ideas. This is the idea. And there are other moduluses that we'll talk about as we go.